Morning, folks. We are not on the homestead. <laughs> We're on another homestead. We're at Big Sky at night. Um, I believe I have a link uh, on our main channel page. Uh, we can go over and check it out. They've got a few uh, YouTube videos on there. You can go over and check them out. What we are doing here today, we were out here the other day and we put in the, this bracing. They built this fence quite a while ago, kind of fast to keep cows out. They have a garden over the way there. And Steph contacted me to come in and, and brace it up and hang the gates. So we installed this gate post right here, a little bit heavier duty post, uh, built an A-frame corner. So this is what an A-frame gate post is. We're actually gonna be installing another brace this way. And just like we would on a timeless, it's done the same way. We measure out five feet and three feet. We dig a trench and we cut the brace on an angle and bury it in the ground. That's what we're gonna be doing here today. I'm gonna to show you how, to, how we put the brace together once we get the hole dug and everything. back a little bit is okay, but not out here. Alrighty, we dug our trench. I just took the auger, punched a series of the holes from five feet to three feet back towards our, our main gate post. And what we try to get, it's not always the case, depending on the contour of the land, obstructions in the ground, all that sort of thing. We try to get 22 inches of depth that way when the post is on a 45 degree angle, we end up with about 30 inches of post in the ground. So the next thing we're gonna do is set the post in, mark it, and then cut our angle on the brace post. So what we're looking for here, we're looking for a 45 degree angle, and that's, that's about what we got. So we're gonna take mark this post, cut it, and put it in position and attach it to our main gate post. We're using a six inch timber lock screw and I really love these things. We have the posts attached with our six inch timber lock. Um, these are used in deck construction, log construction. Uh, they work really good. In the past we have 
drill, pre-drilled a hole and run a rebar in. That works really well. It's just about as cheap either way uh, for what it costs. Uh, these timber locks are a whole lot easier to deal with. I don't have to pre-drill. I just run them in. Our next step is putting our brace wire on or what we call the rung of our A-frame. You can go lower down. I find that it works a lot better uh, if I do it this way. There's um, a whole lot more uh, structural design here than running it across the bottom. Um, it, it pulls, there's a lot of buoyancy here. So this is actually given, so it's pulling um, on the wire, keeping it tight. So this is where I like to put it. It's 27 inches down from the top, which is usually about the center of your post. And it goes all the way to the bottom of your main corner or gate post. In this case, it's a gate post. Okay, so we have our measurement of 27 inches down to the center of our brace post. I'm gonna put a staple there. Not gonna drive it all the way up because I'm gonna use it to thread our wire through here. Then I'm gonna put one at the base of our post over here. So I can run that wire around. Okay, now that we have our wire ran through our staples, just going to tighten that up and then I'm going to twist it the ends around on both sides. Now we'll just twist these two. You can use a stick. We've got an overabundance of these around here. You can use a piece of pipe or even a piece of rebar. We just want to twist this up until it's tight. So I want to talk about the placement of our wire and why I do it this way. Um, most people would attach this wire and run it straight across and tighten it. It's been my experience and it, this fence is not that big and we're just holding the gate. But if you're stretching a long stretch of fence and there's such a thing as that, a term that we use, it's called jacking. So what happens with these A-frame corners if they're not on a, a 45 or as close to a 45 as you can get? and you run the wire across here, the point where you're at actually works as a pivot. So the whole thing kind of rises up out of the ground. So the, the point of pivot is here at the, at the bottom of this brace post. And the whole thing, it will jack out of the ground, particularly if your top strands, if you're running high tensile or bob wire, are, are really tight. So we place it in the middle and what that does is when the post tries to come out of the ground, if you're putting a lot of strain on it, it's actually pulling both points. It's pulling this angle into the post, which pushes out and it's pulling the bottom of the post into the ground. So when we talk about buoyancy, it's how much spring a, a piece of timber or piece of metal, whatever you're using has. So this buoyancy is actually pulling this post into the ground, which prevents it from, from the doing the jacking motion or coming up out of the ground and pivoting. It, it just works better overall to help prevent your post from coming out of the ground. 
So once you build it that way, uh, I've not had any trouble over the years of jacking occurring when I move the wire up to the center. So that's just something that, that we do. This is how we install a an A-frame corner and I believe it'll work well for you too. Alrighty folks, what we're looking for for a gate post or a corner is at least 30 inches, which is what we have here approximately. 32 to 36 is awesome. Um, we're in rocky country as you can see. We got down about 30 inches and we hit a solid level uh, of shell rock and I couldn't, I couldn't chip it out anymore. So we're close enough that we're gonna take and we're gonna set this post. Here's just some of the tools we use. Uh, we have an auger. Uh, we actually picked this up at a big box store. I like this spring kickback feature. It won't take and hurt your shoulders and your arms as bad. I have had it kicked completely out of my hand. Uh, the rock has really wore down the blade just working around the homestead and other places. We're using a really good quality uh, set of post hole diggers. Uh, you can buy the cheaper ones. Uh, I really like these, they, they've worked real good so far. And then of course you need a rock bar. Um, this one here's wore down, it's, it's, it was used when we bought it and we have used it since quite a bit. Uh, busting out rock, chipping out rock. And you can buy them at any big box store. The uh, square, again, uh, you don't have to have it, you can use a regular level, but this lets us be a little bit more hands-free when we're setting posts. We don't have to sit there and hold a level, check it, check it, we can move it around as we need to. So that's just some of the tools we use, of course. Hammers, pliers, bolt cutters, measuring tapes, uh, all those things are needful if you're gonna do fencing and do it right. The other thing is take your time and pay attention to detail. Overall, that's what makes a good fence.